But in Denmark, we have this thing called Yandelon, which is basically don't dream too big. Get your education, get your job, family, nice house, and that's great. But mm. don't, don't think you can just go and conquer the world. When I left to film the TV series, and when I came back, I was a different person and a different actor. We would film in public places sometimes mm -hmm. and create a bit of a scene. Yeah. And I, the Italian police were not happy about us. No matter how many times you go on stage, every single time, the first night of me doing any theater production or show, I look at myself in the mirror and I go, why are you doing this? Man, I'm just covered in Bernays and chicken. I just looked at one of my really good friends, Fred, I was just like, it is what it is, man. There ain't much I can do about this right now. I've been on set and then a month later I'll be in the shower and I'll be like, why didn't you say the line like that? So basically not giving a fuck, but giving a fuck. Not confusing at all. It is Welcome to the profession. I can never become someone else. I will never be a different person or a different character, but I can bring something with this thing that's written that will create a third different thing. You can bring some stuff that I can't and I can bring some stuff that you can't. And it's actually about accepting what you have and appreciating your uniqueness. I'm Andrea Rogozin, and this is Beyond Real Talk, a podcast where I invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions. What are they actually doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? And how can you start doing the same thing? And my today's guest is a Danish actor, my friend, who I met in Working Actor Studio, Frederick Leisgaard. Hello, hello. First of all, my Danish friend, tell me, how do you pronounce your name? In Danish? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be tricky for you. Frederik Lusegård. Okay, I'm not, even, I'm not even going to try because I don't want to butcher your name. <laughs> it's very tricky. Everybody just goes yeah. Fred, Freddy, yeah. Yeah. Fredster, Freddy Prince Jr. Prince Jr. Whatever you prefer. Look, um, you're an actor. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's start from the, from the beginning. So you're you're from from Denmark. Yeah. Uh, how? Why did you choose acting? When? And how did you decide to come here to London? Ah, uh, when when did it all begin? Um, I'm from a very small city up north in Denmark. Around 25, 30,000 people live there. And I've always grown up with a mother who loves films. Mm. She's obsessed. Will mm. read all the reviews. I've, told her many times a film can still be good although it has bad reviews you can still she's very judgmental on film and I just grew up watching everything with her and mm -hmm. it was kind of like our time together go to the cinema I remember being a kid being like can we go to the cinema tonight and then that would be the highlight of mm -hmm. the week you know get the popcorn and for those two hours or yeah. three and a half the Irish man whatever you you disappear into that world and film has always really inspired me if, if I like the soundtrack, I'll listen to that for three months after, or I'll be like, I'll be a boxer now, or I'll be a skater now, or I'll be a, a broker on Wall Street, because I'm working for Wall Street. And I was like, that's fucking, <laughs> that's mental. Um, so yeah, just always had a love for film. But then as I got older, I started to think, how does it actually work? How do they actually make these films? Like, what happens? But because where I'm from, it's not a lot of opportunities to to practice or study that, you have to go to Copenhagen or the bigger cities. But even the acting school in Copenhagen is very difficult to get into. Mm. So I'm 19 years old. Everyone in my city moves to Copenhagen or they go traveling to Asia for three years. So, sorry, which city are you from originally? Is it, it's is called uh, Frederick's Harbor, uh, Frederikshavn. And it's, uh, it's way up north. Yeah. It's um, 30 minutes from where the northern city in Denmark is where the two oceans meet. Yeah. So beautiful, a lot of nature. We got a very nice beach, got palms on the beach. It's mm. really nice. But um, not a whole lot of creative outlet there that's mm. happening. Um, what was your childhood like? Very nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very, um, very peaceful. Very, very lovely. You have uh, your best friends. My best friend to this day used to live opposite me on the street, still talk. Mm -hmm. Christian, shout out, great guy. <laughs> um, very nice, played football, went to school. Like, it was a very, very good upbringing. Mm -hmm. Lots of nature around me. Like, Denmark's very safe, especially where I'm from. Yeah. So there was no real, real issues. I feel very privileged in that way. Mm -hmm. um, especially moving to London when I was 19, I was like, whoa, there's a whole world out here that is 
very different. How different was it? Like, well, what was the first thing that you kind of remember? Like, well, that's really different from what I'm used to. Meeting people from different countries, <laughs> like <laughs> that people are from all over the world and mm. have different cultures. Like, what seems normal to me seems weird to them. And mm. uh, what seems normal to them seems strange to me. I'm like, whoa, you do that, or you eat that type of food, or <laughs> so just so many different <laughs> what impressions. Type of food shock to you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is from my good friend, uh, Sam. Something I'd never heard about before in my life, but love now, plantain. You know the South American food, Jamaican food, plantain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you had it before? No. Okay, you should, try, you should try it. I was just like you. All right. Um, yeah, different cuisines. Just standing on my own two feet in, uh, in a big city. Because I came alone and I didn't know anyone. So it was, when I looked back, I was thinking, how did you move to London when you were 19? How did you move to London? I was, I was working, I finished school, finished college. And like I said, everybody goes to Copenhagen or they go to Asia to travel or whatever, or already know what they want to study. But I wasn't interested in any of that. I was working as a substitute teacher in a school. I was training um, children in football right. and it was, it was a good time. But I thought, you know what? There's something else out there for me. There's something else. I've always felt like there's more. I don't I feel like I didn't belong in this bubble of Denmark. Felt a bit different. I had big dreams. I've always had big dreams. At that time, I wouldn't say my dream was to be an actor. Like deep, deep down it was. But in Denmark, we have this thing called Yandelon, which is basically don't dream too big. Is it like in a way that like not too much is enough to be happy? Like this this kind of basically of philosophy? Don't think too much of yourself. Okay. Don't 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 think you're the man or like you can actually go and do this. Like get your education, get your job, family, nice house, and that's great. But mm. don't don't think you can just go and conquer the world. Um, mm. It's a little bit of a culture like that in Denmark, as you probably know, because we're friends and you know me. I don't really fit into that. <laughs> Yo, you don't into that culture. <laughs> you dream big. Yeah, I actually found we have this thing called a blue book, um, which in school when we're 15 we write our dreams and our goals and dream jobs and. Um, I found that a few years ago and it actually said dream job to be an actor. Mm. So I'm 19, working as a substitute teacher, training children in, in football and it's all great. But then I come up with the idea, why not move to London? I'd never been before either. Mm. Six months was the plan. I'll move to London for six months. I'll try and live in a big city. I'll experience the world. Oh, and let me put this short course on uh, an acting school as well. So mm. I did book a week um, at Central St. Martins, like acting for absolute beginners, I think it was called. And I was like, you know what? I have to do that. I'm going to London. I have to at least see what this acting dream I have is about. Am I good at it? Will I actually like it when I, when I do act? And um, then I moved to London, did the short course. And every day when I left that course, I'm a, I walked home, I used to live in Camden, was the most happy I've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Like every day, I just felt in my stomach to my core whoa i'm happy because i got to do acting and for the first time i i built a scene from scratch and watched it come to life when you have the lines on the script but then it actually becomes a real thing mm -hmm. and real emotions happen and you feel adrenaline and it just really grabbed me by the, bo the boss <laughs> it just really grabbed me by everything um that's when I was like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. But then I fucked around for about a year, a year and a half. I worked at, um, as a waiter at Six and Sushi and I just enjoyed London. Mm. Went out a lot, had a lot of Guinness, a lot of pints. And then I thought to myself, why don't you actually take this serious? Why don't you try, really try and become an actor? Yeah. So I Googled how to become an actor. Mm. Um, classic, yeah, Google everything. And then I found Star Now, the, all these pages where you're supposed to do small short films, student films, whatever to get going. Mm. And um, I just started doing that. Mm. Yeah, I had some great advice from a friend actually, who said, just go out and do everything. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to drama school, you can, but he had, it's an eight, he was an agent actually, um, rest in peace, he's not with us anymore. Mm. But um, he gave me the best advice so far. And he said, just get out there and just do stuff. Just get experiences. Hmm. learn from everything and you'll meet people. And that's exactly what happened. And do you remember your first acting job? I do, yeah. 
What was it? <laughs> um, it was a student short film. Hmm. Um, I applied on Star Now for this. I have my first set shots taken. Hmm. I'll show you later. I look I'm about 15 and I was 19 at the time. <laughs> Thank God the beer here. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I got an audition for the student short film. And I remember calling my mom and being like, I got an audition for the student short film. And I'm so excited. And I was so nervous. Yeah. I was shitting myself. I go into this <clears throat> school where they held the auditions. And I'm there with a the piece of paper and I was like shaking. I was like, <laughs> you fucking got this feeling. Come on. I know you the feeling. You got this baby, come on. I was like, <laughs> um, and I go in and, and they, uh, they asked me to do different things, uh, look for stuff and be like energetic and emotional, whatever. And I just really, really went for it. I went a bit mad mm -hmm. in the audition because I was like, you don't fucking do this, man. You yeah, got this audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't waste this opportunity. Yeah. And then I got it and then uh, did, this, did the short film and it went really well. And, just started doing more stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we see this short film somewhere? It's uh, no, you can't. It's on you. <laughs> it's not on YouTube. Don't don't look it up. Please. Well, we don't even know the the, the title. Is it yeah. on your IMDb now? It's no, no. It's uh, uh, it's a great a learning experience. But such a shame. I've come, I've come I've come far since then. I, I hope so. How many years ago was it? That must have been six seven. six years ago. Yeah. Six years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Do you feel you 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 went like a long way? Since then? Since then, yeah. 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 Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing back then. I uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I have a, a lot of more knowledge of, first of all, who I am mm -hmm. as a person. I've gotten to grow into myself and know myself more. And also just small tricks and tips you pick up along the way with camera work and mm -hmm. what do I want from this scene? What am I trying to do to the other person? All these things like, yeah. that I had no clue about. <laughs> I guess I just thought it was super cool to act, yeah. but now I actually understand that it's it's way more intricate than that. And yeah. I would say the three things that I learned the most from was being on set, being inexperienced, mm -hmm. but then gaining experience from being on set, working actors, studio, Lee Lomas, the guy who runs it especially. Don't know where I'd be without him if I wouldn't have um, landed where he was at, what he was teaching. That was the most progress I've ever seen in my life mm. with anything. But for me with acting, it's, yeah, I really grew a lot those years. I went three years, three and a half years, once a week, a new script every week, two, three pages. And I think I only missed, in three years, I must've missed four or five classes. So I just went so consistent. Yeah. And I was, you know, taking notes and I was really like, I've really learned a lot. I grew mm -hmm. so much from it. No, it's true. It's true because we both were like watching, you know, each other at the yeah. work actor studio and we both know that we both went through a long way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> because I do remember like coming to act, work actor studio before it was work actor studio. It was just, you know, Lee's class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I remember I, I, I was coming there. I, I thought like, I know acting. I thought, no. I thought you were the man when I came. I was like, fuck, I gotta step up. <laughs> I was, I was Andre so is, shit. Andre is killing this, man. That's, can you do the scene like that? No, no, when I came, I, I don't know if you remember how green I was. I was. I remember Lee, the first feedback he gave me, he said, good energy, you have good energy. Um, yeah. I, I might have something to say, but I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, I mean, because I, I went to identity, like I did some classes before that I went to identity, then I went to least class. So I wasn't like very green, but at the same time, in comparison to kind of now, it's just, it's, it's, you can't compare it. No, you can't compare it. <laughs> it's, it's completely different, different level. And it's not like I'm amazing now. It's just like, Come on. it's just in comparison, it's, it's two different things completely. It's like we two spoke about this, well. Andre is always, kicking himself down when he needs to build himself up. He's an amazing actor, <laughs> waving at strangers, probably one of the funniest and at the same time dramatic roles. Like, yeah. It's so good. Waving at strangers was great. This was like uh, Lee's uh, pilot that we did. Uh, and it was one of the best, I think, experiences that I had, you know, yeah, acting. It's, it's such a shame it didn't pick up. It will, it will, it'll, it'll happen. <laughs> you never know. I don't know. I think like, do you think it's still in, in the running? <laughs> <laughs> for anything we did a spin-off yeah, yeah, called yeah figuring it out yeah well we narrowed the story down a little bit 
and uh, it was slightly different, more comedic mm -hmm. and less dramatic. And that had some uh, that had a good reception mm -hmm. at um, a few film festivals and yeah. feedback we got and stuff. So I think he's gonna do something with that story. Well, it depends. It depends if there is if there are people who are interested in in you know producing it. Then well, of course, hopefully, I'll. I'll be back then. <laughs> of course. Never say never. That's one thing about this industry or mm. one thing I feel like I'll will never lose, knock on wood, I hope not, is my optimism and like positivity. And if mm. life kicks you down, you just gotta sound so cliche, but you just have to go straight back up. It's true. Like yeah. if you think all the things I've learned, everything is a lesson and everything has happened for a reason. Mm. Like oh, even when I've been feeling really low, really down, feeling lost some way somehow you'll get out of that and mm. when you get on the other side you'll feel more motivated more driven and mm. you've learned a lot from being from fucking up or being low or being down that's at least the way i look at it yeah but i think it also depends on uh who surrounds you show me your friends you, you sometimes you, you, you need people to pick you up <laughs> oh yeah that was my third my third point that yeah. i've learned the most from um some people in my life who I'm so grateful, blessed to have. Um, don't know if, you, if you've met them, uh, Mr. Jack McAvoy, Elijah Rowan, Thomas Beatty, Lorenzo Lancelotti, sitting right behind us. Those are just a few people who made me feel like I could really do anything and made me feel very seen and, mm -hmm. and just really made me believe in myself. They gave me a shot um, for my first feature and gave me responsibility and then kept giving me responsibility for another feature that we have coming out in July and premiering at Curson in, uh, in Soho, which I'm really excited about. But that's just because they believed in me and said, you know, we'll give you a shot, we'll write this for you, we'll do this. And they're, they're so inspirational and motivational to be around. Mm. Um, it's honestly, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. They put so much fuel on this already mm. burning fire. They really do. Um, so that's really important to have people like that. Well, Lorenzo gave me my first shot, my first lead role yeah. in a TV series that we have coming out. And um, when I left to film the TV series and when I came back, I was a different person and a different actor, honestly. Mm. And that's all because he gave me a shot and believed in me. Mm. So I think it's so important. Do you want to talk about all those opportunities, uh, like separate? Yeah. Which one do you want to start with? <laughs> Should we start with a TV series? Yeah. I don't know. Sure. All right. Um, and I'm, I'm sure at some point I'll do a podcast with Lorenzo as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. It's called uh, Healing Andy. And it's set in London and Italy. About four best friends that go on, let's say, a bro trip. Mm -hmm. And it all starts well. And then in the end, it doesn't go so well. A lot of <laughs> mad stuff happens. A lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he cast me for that after seeing a working actor studio showcase. Yeah. So he went to a showcase uh, for working actors that I believe you were in as well. Yeah. He went and saw that. And then he um, saw um, Elliot. I almost called him by his character name, Matt. Elliot, Matt, and uh, Sam and I. Yeah. Matt, Matt was on the podcast in, in episode two. Is he talking about healing Andy? No, no, I don't think I don't think we we went through this. No, no. Come on, Matt, talk about <laughs> healing Andy, man. We gotta do some promo here. <laughs> no, he saw us there, and um, he'd already had the idea for the show, and then he was like, "These guys can do it," and um, auditioned us and gave us a, a shot, and then mm. the rest is kind of history. But yeah. just to get that shot, get the opportunity, yeah, um, by chance, because if you wouldn't have come to the show, who wouldn't have seen us? If I wouldn't have met some people who made me meet Lee and start working actors, yeah. so it's all connected. Yeah. It's all about putting yourself out there. Yeah. Like the advice I got back mm. in the day, put yourself out there and you'll meet people. Yeah. And that will bring opportunity. Mm. And that's how you get them connections. And, yeah. and uh, where, when should we expect Healing Andy? Hopefully. Yeah. You never know, it's in the editing process right now. Um, it's looking really good. Yeah, because I, I remember because you didn't like it wasn't just one shoot. You shot it a few times. We right? went to we went back and forth three times, three or four times. Yeah, to Italy. So it's set in London and Italy, and we went mm -hmm. to Italy three times. I think mm -hmm. it was uh, it was a crazy shoot. It was. <laughs> 
beautiful memories from there. <laughs> Anything you want to share? <laughs> because I remember, I remember one thing when you went. I think the first time uh, you went the first time, and I spoke to Samuel, and yeah. he said like Freddie just grew on this shoot. Like he just like he said, I I I'm looking at him in a very very different light right now because I can understand how good he is as an actor. What light did he look at me before? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> like yeah, fucking Freddie. Yeah, no, 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 I'm joking. No, but like joking. it's because we know you know we know each other from working at the studio. Like that's what we see, but it's not always like you not always can understand. Like you can just just see this like growing scale, but at the same time. When you do something big with each other, it's very different. It's the same as like when I when I when I watched uh, Sam in, in the play uh, in the play in in Sonia's play Tititutatown. Town. Yeah, 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 that was insane. As like, a mayor, yeah, yeah, great. yeah, he was amazing there. Like, and it's and I knew he's good, but like this is completely different. So I think this this was the same same situation. Yeah, I think it's once you're on set, it's different. Um, you can practice all you want, mm. but it's just. That's just practice mm. we're talking about. Um, once you're on set, that's when it counts. Yeah, but don't you find, I don't know, because what's easier for you, being in a class or on set? On set. Yeah. Way I, easier. I agree. That's, Way it's, easier. It's weird because in the working access studio, like, we're all friends. They're like people, like no one is judging you. And you know that like when you perform, but at the same time, I, I spoke about it to Charlene as well, like uh, last week. I'm being more nervous in the class than I'm on the set. Big time, by quite, quite a bit actually. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, I think it's like, it's a school presentation almost and the whole class is watching mm -hmm. and you have to go up there and do your presentation. Mm -hmm. You're sitting, you're waiting. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a bit of, you want to do good, you want to impress. Um, people, you want to impress yourself. You want to. Once you're on set, you already have the job. Yeah. You've booked the gig, yeah. so you kind of have that. I booked it because I'm the right person for the job. Mm. So you have that confidence going in, and then you're with people who all want to make it great. What we're doing here. Mm. So there's support. At least in my experience, I've only had good experiences. Yeah. There, there's support here. There's people um, wanting you to go and do your best. Yeah. Not saying people don't do that in class, but it's a very different environment. Yeah, I think so. I think, and like, and again, on set, everyone does their job. It's not like everyone just stands and looks at you. Like there are like two people, <laughs> yeah, <right>. three people <laughs> who look actually look at you. Like everyone else is doing something. So it's yeah, yeah it's, it, it is different. You kind of switch on. Mm. You just um, it's like a game or like sports. When the whistle blows, you know, you gotta you just tab in. I think. Mm. And, uh, and that's, for me, that's when it's really fun and really good. Yeah. When you're on set and you're creating magic together on set yeah. and, and you can feel like, that was good. That's actually, this is like, this is the thing that is amazing to me when you're working on set is there's just so many people, everyone does something, but like they're all kind of pulled together to make this thing. So it's like a machine, like yeah. a well-old machine. And well, when it's well-old, then yes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's very, like the northern line. <laughs> but so fun stories from 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 that shoot. There's a lot of nudity. <laughs> yeah, but from the, like the male characters. Mm -hmm. um, Can't wait to see. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. If you weren't excited already, <laughs> um, I mean, so many. Ma oh yeah, the amount of times we got stopped by police. Oh really? Doing filming because we were filming pub. We would, it was very gorilla style. Uh -huh. We would film in public places sometimes, mm -hmm. and create a bit of a scene. Yeah, and I, the Italian police were not happy about us. They were. I wonder why. There's one scene, which I think I can say. Um, so it's a lot of improv. Mm -hmm. Lorenzo he wrote the script. A hundred and in the first script we got was 185 pages, which was a lot. But mm. that was written after we've improved and rehearsed for two months. Yeah. So we had a two months rehearsal process, improv, improv, improv. Um, then he wrote a script based on that. Get on set, even more improv. Mm. I think what you're gonna see the scenes. Yeah. Eighty five percent, ninety ninety percent is improv. Mm. But we have the outline, we have the analysis from the script, but then we go and riff. So you knew where you're going. We kn we know where we're going. We know which direction it's going. Yeah. But we all know each other. And we, we all like improv. Mm. So we we'll just create some gold. And the way Lorenzo works, which 
so blessed to have that experience. He would hear us improv or say something and he would be right next to us and, go, and he would go, oh fuck, but yeah, 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 what about this? Now say this. And then we would, we'd go on another tangent and then yeah. he'd be like, okay, now bring it back to this. Mm. So we would work with him, literally improving the scene on the go, mm. all day, every day. The yeah. amount of laughs we had. I mean, one time there was a swan out in the lake and uh, it ended, Elliot ended up swimming after the swan, chasing it in the middle of like a public space and all the, these Italians were like, is he okay? Like, is he crazy? <laughs> Did, almost got attacked by the swan, um, uh. made it back. Um, we've done, yeah, we've done a lot of, I don't, I don't know what I can say. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, great shoot, very fun. So this is one of the things that you did and it's like in post-production right now. And then you said there were two features. Yeah. There's one called uh, Caledonia, mm -hmm. which is the first feature film I ever did. Yeah. Where, <clears throat> you know, Corin, Yeah. from Working Actors, she sent out a message and said, these guys are doing a movie. They're looking for a few extra people, extra actors to come mm -hmm. in and mostly like an extras kind of thing but there might be a few lines or something yeah and me who's never done a proper feature before i'm like oh yeah, yeah for sure mm. count me in so i send my stuff to uh, gordon quigley great guy should all check him out and uh, he goes yeah sure you're in and uh matt and elliot also get in mm. so the three of us that's when we really bonded this was before filming healing Anna. yeah yeah we go on a road trip to Wales, uh, up in Snowdonia in the mountains where this film is uh, being filmed. Mm. With um, They're now West One Entertainment, uh, directed by Glenn Kirby. And that's where Jack and Elijah and Tom, and uh, that's where I met all those boys mm -hmm. who are now a very big part of my life. So I go there and it's supposed to be, um, I'm playing a prisoner and I'm having, my scene is, my biggest scene is like a fight scene, but we kind of really went for it, me and the other actor. We had a shot beforehand, uh, before we hyped up the mountain. We're like, should we do a few shots? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And uh, again, that was very guerrilla style as well. Like we didn't really choreograph the whole fight, like loosely mm -hmm. choreograph, but we said, let's just see what, let's feel it out and Is see what happens. Is it just a fight or sword fight? It's fight, it's just a fight. And it just, it turned out really grueling. Like it, it was really brutal. Mm. Also the guy, he's, a lot bigger than me. <laughs> it's not very difficult to be a lot bigger than me, but he was very tall, yeah. um, big, big dude. And um, yeah, it went, like I got, a, I got a blue eye from a black eye from it. And <laughs> they were like checking me for concussions and stuff, because we really went for it. Yeah. Now there was safe and healthy there, safe, yeah. safety healthy there, but we, we decided to go for it. Yeah. And uh, that really gave me a lot of confidence because it went so well. And the other small scenes I had were, and it's my first feature, mm -hmm. but I'm on set and I'm doing really well on set. So far, I've only been practicing with working at a studio or done small short films. So now I'm on a big set doing a feature, just absolutely killed it in this fight scene. And the lead actors and the director are all like, fucking hell, well done. Like a lot of, again, positivity and a lot of people bringing you up and actually applauding you for your job and not bringing you down, mm -hmm. which made me go like, whoa, yeah. Oh, I guess I did really good. Mm -hmm. I, I've re I felt really proud and really happy and and then gained confidence from that. Um, well, I, f I feel like you you never lacked confidence, at least visually. Like, this I, should, like I, right. I, it always like felt that you are confident. It wasn't not like, wasn't just the surface. No, I, I am a confident guy. Yeah. But to get the confirmation of, because I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. I think I can do almost anything in the mm -hmm. world. You can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> if I think if I put my mind to yeah. it, I can do it. But to actually get the confirmation and um, I'm very confident, but I'm also very humble in where I am in my journey. So I know I have my peers and people that I can learn a lot from mm. and ask questions. And I have a lot of people I look up to who I will learn from and I've never thought that I can, that I'm the best in the world or, or, oh fuck, I got it, man. I know my shit, but mm. I know that I can get there and I know the abilities and the skills I have now and who I am as a person. Yeah. You know, like, you know, when you watch one of my big idols is Marlon Brando 
and I feel like he transcends screen. Like you'll be in your living room watching it, but you fuck, you really feel it. Mm. Like when he's staring at at the other actor, or you can feel it in your in your sofa when you're watching mm. the film. And I believe I can do the same mm. uh, with a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. But that's why I got into acting because I want to be able to do that to people. Yeah. So when I found out that whoa, I actually did a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, in that moment, I got just so hungry, like mm -hmm. even more passionate and more hungry to just yeah go for it. And I think it's important to believe in yourself with whatever you choose to do. Don't do the Yandelo from Denmark. <laughs> don't let people try and bring you down, or yeah, don't 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 bring yourself down as well. Don't be too self-deprecating. Yeah. Now, a lot of people would say that, oh, that's arrogant. No, 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 no. Not in this case. It's just like sometimes, because as you said before, like, well, Andrew likes to, you know, bash on himself. Like, it's not, I'm not, I'm not bashing on myself. I, I know, I know my strong sides. I do understand I'm not a bad actor. I can be really good as well. But at the same time, I'm trying to be realistic. Like, and I kind of want to recognize my weaker sides. So it's, that's, uh, but you know, it's it's not like blindly being delusional. Uh, it's like being or, realistic, man. Or <laughs> you know, you want you want to find this balance. But may, but maybe you don't. That's the thing. Like maybe uh, I think a lot of people who don't like who really just believe in themselves, never doubt themselves, who like think that they are amazing, everything. They just do shit. Yeah. And Shit gets done. <laughs> Stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I was extremely de delusional moving as a 19 year old to London, mm. saying, I'm gonna fucking do this. I'm gonna yeah. be an actor. Um, and I'm gonna work with some of my idols. I'm gonna make films that are gonna be in the cinema. I'm gonna touch people with my acting and my art. And I'm gonna potentially change. A lot of people's view on life or inspire them and motivate them through a performance. Mm. That is a bit delusional when you're 19 and you have no experience and you're from Denmark and you move to London. What isn't? Yeah. When you're 19. <laughs> but hey, it's going pretty well so far. Uh, so Caledonia, Caledonia, you yeah. worked on that one. Is it out? Where can we watch it? It's not out yet. No. It's out soon. Mm. It's been a long process. Um, they, uh, Glenn, he really wanted to get it perfect. So... Um, it's not. It's out soon, though. And so, and happen. what's the what's the next project you want to talk about? Um, that's a film that's coming out soon. It's called The Hook, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a comedy. And that's with the company West One Entertainment, with the people I did Caledonia with. Um, the director Tommy was kind enough to write me a part in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm playing a Danish anarchist. <laughs> so you're gonna see me with eyeliner. All black leather nice. and, uh, and play a Danish anarchist uh -huh. in, in this film. Yeah, it's really funny. It's really good. Yeah, some great performances, and uh, I think things gonna do really well. These boys, they know what they're doing, yeah. and they're they're mega talented, mm. very charming people. <laughs> um, they'll it's gonna go somewhere big. Yeah, nice, nice. And what about theater? Theater. I did a play last year, I believe. Uh, One Minute by Simon Stevens. Yeah. Did a week's play um, at King's Head Theatre in Angel, mm -hmm. which was really fun. I, uh, As much as I love film and TV, I also love theatre. It's a so, completely different world. So if you, if you compare film and TV with theatre, like well, what's, what's the difference? What do you prefer? Well, you can't go cut. Can we can't do that again? <laughs> Have something in my eye. <laughs> it's just the adrenaline is yeah. unreal. Yeah. No matter how many times you go on stage, every single time, the first night of me doing any theater production or show, I look at myself in the mirror and I go, why are you doing this? Why did you sign up for this, man? <laughs> oh my God, is it too late to call it off? Because you just get so, uh -huh. you get so nervous, man, or like excited, nervous, the mm. adrenaline is pumping. Yeah. But every single time when you then go off stage and you're done, you're like, that was the best thing ever, man. Yeah. It's to uh, act, perform anything in front of a crowd, live is it's next level. Mm. Like adrenaline and the instant gratification from then it's over and then it's yeah. done. 
and you're like, whew. But then we, and immediately after, I don't know if you have the same feeling, it's kind of like, oh, can we go again? And like, I want to yeah. do it again now. Yeah. Do you get nervous on stage and stuff? Do you shit yourself as well? Uh, yeah, I think like first few minutes, it's like basically trying not to shoot yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like first few minutes, you're just trying to kind of to get into this, like, because you want like, when you're on stage, you want to be like right there straight away in the first moment. But no, I think the like first few moments, like you're just trying to kind of for, for you know, to fight the shaking, shakiness in, in the knees. <laughs> so, and then as soon as you switch your attention to your team partners, like then you, enjoy which, it. then you just, yeah, completely enjoy it. The best, the best scenes I think like is the ones that I don't remember doing. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Sometimes you finish the scene and you're like, I don't remember how I said that or yeah. how I did that, but that's because yeah. you were present in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, those are the best. And I remember I only once I did a uh, theater run, like f the longest one was four performances, four nights uh, in a row, which again, like it's nothing for someone yeah. <laughs> who does like a whole season or like a few years and like yeah. doing the same play. That would be for a me, bit much though. For me, four was the best. And basically on the last night, I was like, fuck, I need to go back to my muggle, muggle life now. I don't have performances every day. I need to go back to work. Like, because you, when you do theater, you just like, you, you wake up, you do some, you know, vocal warm up, you do the, you know, and like go for coffee, you go through lines again, you think about this and that. You go to theater, like you warm up again, you get prepared, like, and then you just do the performance. You're like, fuck, it's so amazing. And then you're just like, and that's, that's, that's it. Fuck. What now? Like when you yeah. finish a really good TV series? Yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna touch on something. You said uh, muggle job, muggle life. A lot of actors use that word, like muggle job. Or yeah. I hate it. I hate that word. Yeah, why? I think to be a creative person and put stuff out there, writing, be a musician, director, actor, is um, extremely brave. Because you're putting something out in the world that yeah. wasn't there before and you're creating something that comes from hopefully your heart mm -hmm. and your soul because you don't act with your words you act with your soul like stella <laughs> adler said um and i think that's brave and that should be applauded and recognized which it is but when actors go oh my model job or that's a model life it's no better than any other profession it's no better than being a garbage man or a teacher or a nurse or whatever because you know what being, I've been a waiter for seven years. Yeah. The amount of lessons I've learned from being a waiter or the amount of people I've met yeah. who've taught me something in life that actors or other people will never be able to teach me. Yeah. Um, it's just as valuable. So don't look at it as like, oh, that's my model job or model life. I mean, it's, it's not, all it's, the, and we all act all the time anyway. Yeah. Every job. No, I understand. I understand what you mean. Like every, like any job could be like your Hogwarts. Yeah, and everything else could be a muggle job. Like I'm saying this in a way that, like, for me personally, this is the thing that gives me the most pleasure and you know just satisfaction doing. So everything else for me is a muggle job, not because it's a bad job. Because I I worked as a designer for 20 years. It's a great fucking job. I just don't like it anymore after 20 years. But I. I it was for me, it was at some point I was really burning with it. I, I loved it. Not anymore. That's why I'm, I'm using this term, but like, obviously, <laughs> don't get offended. Your job is important. I'm not trying to diminish you. It's just for me, you're a muggle. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. Me working as a waiter yeah. at times is like a dementor sucking mm. the soul out of me. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's sometimes when you're in the pot wash and you're loading off plates. Now I really mm -hmm. like my job. Just need to pay rent. Um, when you're loading off food and trays in the pot mm -hmm. wash and you just stand in there because you have a dream of something else. Yeah. Whatever that dream is, music, acting, whatever. Mm. To not be able to do that and you just have to deal with the shit you're in at the moment in, in, in that restaurant, mm. it can really be draining like um, yeah. on your, yeah, on your soul, on your mind, um, not doing what you love. Yeah. Because as, as we know, acting is very unforgiving in the, in, the, in the sense that we don't always have work 
Mm. There's not always a project around the corner. Most, I don't know about you, but right now I live in a life when I have one acting job a year, which is, as I said before, is very fucking hard to call yourself an actor when you act once a year and just like, it's, you're not an actor. You're just like, this is some, some game for you. <laughs> Still an actor. Still an actor. <laughs> just a shitty one. <laughs> and a podcast host. And a podcast host, yes. Yeah, I've been true. lucky, though. I've been blessed. Um, I've been having projects pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't have a project, there's one in the works that I know I'm going to be in. Yeah. So I can kind of mm. linger to that, you know? Like right now, I have a few different projects in, in development and yeah. I know they're going to happen. So, and I'm helping Lorenzo sometimes with the editing and like yeah, we talk about the show a lot and mm -hmm. some producing. So I've, I'm lucky to have something to always look forward to yeah but if i sometimes if i haven't had that it, it has been like very tough mm. i don't know <laughs> i know man it's, honestly it's like it's uh it's hard to, to to keep yourself motivated when nothing happens and just you know when you live just with hopes like well maybe now maybe now or maybe this edition maybe like maybe i'll get an edition because last year for me was so dry it's it's insane i had a few editions at the beginning of the year and then for probably seven months or something like that i didn't have anything uh which probably well, i mean yeah the strikes and all this stuff but it's just it's hard to keep yourself motivated and at some point like if you don't surround yourself with people who do something it's just it's very hard. Yeah, it's tough. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. How how do you keep yourself motivated? Undying belief that I am gonna make it, mm. and I've always had that um, since I moved here. All right. And the people I surround myself with, to spar with and talk to, and if I am feeling a bit low, sometimes mm. we'll have a conversation and share wisdom and yeah. yeah bring each other up and and I think it's actually also good to feel low sometimes. So that's probably that's probably it. I don't get caught up in the lows. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think a lot of people tend to get caught up in feeling yeah. depressed or low or they kind of label themselves as mm -hmm. depressed now or... Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're just having a phase in your life, you feel a bit low. Or well, this week has been a bit blue. Mm -hmm. I've been a bit blue this week. But you know what? I'm probably going to feel better next week. So I try not to get caught up in it. I'm, I'm very so, good at I'm very good at bringing myself up. So you can bring yourself <laughs> up your by yourself without any help. Yeah, that's a good thing to, to, to you know. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I don't think it's ignorance. I don't think it's 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 that. It's just because I know, like I can get caught up with you know, just like not even understanding that I'm feeling low and just going like this, just you know, in circle and circle, and then at some point realizing, oh wow. That wasn't great, but I didn't even know that. Yeah. I've never... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I mean, like, it's, <laughs> you don't have to be sorry about it. <laughs> no, I feel low sometimes. Yeah. But I'm pretty happy though, lucky. I don't mm. know. Well, I don't know, since you met me, it's always been pretty... Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Pretty yeah. good mood. Yeah. <laughs> Is it just you or, or like, what helps you to keep this mood? Just believe? Yeah, just believe. Just I've always been a pretty happy guy, man. Mm -hmm. I, I deal with I deal with life with humor. Mm -hmm. Like if something is shit or going wrong. The other day I uh serving food in the restaurant and I dropped uh, a massive tray with sauce and uh, food all over myself. <laughs> Probably still have burn ice behind my ear. <laughs> And I just, I was like, this is actually a joke. <laughs> like, talk about a low moment in your life, working like a 10 hour yeah. shift. Um, I've finished all my projects right now, so there's nothing, there's future stuff in the works, but there's nothing yeah. right now, so I'm working. Yeah. And I'm there and I'm like trying to, okay, let's have fun at work, you know, and let's make it, mm -hmm. let's make it enjoyable and keep the spirit up and then I just, then I'm just covered in Bernays and chicken. I just looked at one of my really good friends, Fred, I was just like, it is what it is, man. But there ain't much I can do about this right now. Yeah. So whenever, whatever happens, I like to, yeah, take the piss out of it a little bit, um, mm. deal with it with humor or don't take things too, too heavy, you know? Mm. Are, you, are you healthy? Are you alive? Your friends good, your family good? 
you, no. well, you'll get there, you know? I agree, I agree with that. It's just sometimes I feel like I might feel, you know, what they say, because I'm coming from Eastern Europe. So I remember when I was watching some, some movies with my dad, with my family, and I remember there was this, always the scene where like someone goes to, you know, therapy. And my dad was always like, oh, fucking, that's, you don't really have problems. This is not a real problem. And I, sometimes I feel like this. I mean, I do understand now since I moved here, I, it's not like what I, what I think. It's not like I'm always like, ah, you guys don't have problems. Like you, we do have problems and we do sometimes we need therapy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it all like in comparison to someone, you can think like, yeah, those, those are not problems. I'm just a little bit sad. Like no one's dying. My family is healthy. Everything is fine. It's like, it's all right. I'm just a little bit sad. Yeah. But you need to remind yourself about it sometimes because sometimes you just like, just go about it like, oh my God, my life is shit. <laughs> Mental health is important yeah. and it's important to keep an eye on it. Um, but also if you are feeling low or down, have you gone for a walk today? I understand some people are really low so they can't even get themselves out of bed. Yeah. But if you are able to get yourself out of a rut by going for a walk, Mm. Um, getting some sun in your eyes, call your best friend or your mom or have a chat or whatever. There, there are things we can do. Mm. And this sounds, this is probably the real reason why I'm all right. Yeah. Sounds, might be a bit mad. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of love it when it's a bit painful, man. Yeah. Like when I'm in the restaurant or doing something, I've been some manual labor, or whatever. I kind of love it when life is a bit shit at times. Mm. Like I feel, I look at it as like paying your dues because mm. I can be the highest of highs on set, yeah. having a great fucking time, feeling like the king of the world. Mm. Just did an amazing scene with my partner. We just sma we smashed the man and you know it's going to be such good cinema and have that high and then having Bernays behind my ear and on mm. my shoes. I, I don't really mind the contrast, mm. to be honest. I feel like it's paying my dues a little bit. But that's also because I think I'm gonna get yeah. where I'm going. So, as my good friend David said, he's okay with where he is right now because you know where he, he knows where he's going. Mm. That's good philosophy. He yeah. might not give you another one. Mm. He also said this. <laughs> Sometimes me and him will have a few beers and he'll just say some real wise stuff and I'll be like, I need to write that down. <laughs> um, you might not like wood, but the bridge that you're crossing right now is made of wood. Hmm. That's pretty good. I know he said that, <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> Let me write that down, brother. Have you Have you ever thought about writing? I do write sometimes. Yeah. I write poetry sometimes. You want to hear one? Yeah, sure. I wrote one. Uh, this one is about uh, like my closest friends, because. Um, Everything that we've spoken about so far, whenever life is shit or you feel low, I've always, I have these people around me and they make me feel so good about myself. Mm -hmm. And they're like family. They're basically because all my family is in Denmark. Yeah. These guys here that I have over here in my life are my brothers. Mm -hmm. They're like family. So I was like, let me write a poem about it. It just kind of came to me. Yeah. They are my brothers not by blood, but a bond much stronger. A day spent without them seems a bit longer, a bit somber. They've danced with the devil, they've dined with the queen and everything in between. So I can walk my road a bit wiser and that bit lighter. A day spent with my brothers makes me wish that that day would be that bit longer. Nice. Oh, I fucking love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, should be so a song. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments if you like the poem. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I write um, short scenes sometimes. Yeah, sometimes a monologue, um, just to get some feelings out. Mm. If I'm in my feels, I'll put on some sad music and write. And uh, have you thought about writing something longer? Yes and no. I like working with people coming up with ideas. Yeah, um, I'm a very creative person. So, I mean, the amount of times me and my mates will do a gag or a gimmick or pull on like. You know, when you came in and I was like, yeah. I'm already like thinking of stuff that's fun to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm very creative that way. 
So I like doing that type of stuff. Um, but to sit down and actually write a longer thing, I don't know if I love it. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. I love coming up with ideas hmm. and like improv ideas together and build on stuff. Hmm. That's what I find really fun. Nice. Yeah. You write, don't you? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore? <laughs> Not right now, no. I mean, like, this is my full, full-time full job at the moment. Uh, and with everything that I wrote, I obviously knew that it needs a lot of rewrites. And also when I'm done with it, I had no idea what to do with it. How to make people who count to read it. Because you can yeah. write something and then... Uh, your friends probably will not read it because your friends don't care about your job usually. Like it's just you know it's it, you I need new friends. <laughs> no, it's it's not even about that. It's just like so, especially if we talk about friends, not from acting. You know, it's like yeah, oh, acting, yeah, acting is your job. They don't really get it. I understand that, but like I'm not asking you to look at my job. So fuck off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Just in general, because people are busy with doing their stuff. Like, and if it's just like, well, I wrote something, can you write it? Look, can you read it? Like, yeah, I can. But then people are busy and you're like, well, they forgot. So whatever. And to, to make someone who really counts to read it, like, I'm not sure what to do with it. Like, I can, okay, I can write some stuff. I can write some stuff that is not bad. But then we'll need more work and people to read it. To make it happen. Why do you write? Why? Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> when you did. What made you want to write? I always was this kind of person. Like, I was writing stuff when I was in Russian. When I was 20, 21, 22, 23, I was writing some fantasy short stories. And I, I did put them on some uh, writing contests. And I had some good feedback in general. So I know I can write a story in general, mm -hmm. this short story. And I, I just, I think this is, I always wanted to create something. Acting is like from, from the same, same perspective. Like I want to be a part of a story. I want it, I like to tell, I love to tell stories. I want to be a part of one. And I want to create something that would live when I'm gone, for example, mm. or if like, you know, just, just create something new to live something, you know, to leave something after myself, which is kind of pretentious <laughs> and all this kind Makes of like, sense. and, and also I'm pretty sure that I kind of, I need validation. I know that for sure. Like, yeah. I'm not like, I'm not one of those actors who just, I do this for the, for the art. I oh, do this no, for like, yeah. no, I want validation. Like, yeah. I want to do a good job. It's not like it's all about me, but I want to be recognized. Hey, why do you think way. I'm acting, pal? <laughs> <laughs> so, so someone can tell me that they're good. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. part of it. Part of and, it is probably, yeah. And that's why, and just in general, like when, when I was writing some stuff here already, like for, you know, that I thought maybe could be like a feature film or series or whatever, I was writing some stuff. It's just like when I have an idea, like, and I, I don't write it straight away. I just, I just wait and I wait and wait and wait. And then at some point it's just like, okay, I got to write it down now because otherwise it just will explode. <laughs> I just need to do it. And that, that's, that's kind of it. But then when I realized that doing it will not bring, like it, it's not going anywhere then when i come like i lose motivation like well why interesting is it very interesting how often do you go back to denmark probably not enough do you miss it not really no not really um i'm 26 now so i spent my years from 19 to 26 in london mm. at my 20s here I miss my family. Um, I miss my friends, but I actually don't. I've, I'm very patriotic in the way that I love Denmark and I love being Danish, but I don't, it's just as much home as London is. Um, so I go back home like three times a year. That's more often than I go back to Latvia. Oh yeah? <laughs> yes. Well my mom would kill me if I didn't go. Yeah. Yeah. But she's a bit scared of flying, so yeah. I have to go there. 
What is being Danish for you? You said you love being Danish. You know what? I think I'm chatting shit. Because like, <laughs> I'm not like other Danish people, really. I might be chatting shit here, actually. And An English guy said to me the other day, he said that something about the Danish people. And he said, yeah, but you're not Danish. You're, you're more of a Londoner. And I was mm. like, yeah, I guess that's right. Mm. Vikings. We got the Vikings. Yeah. Not just you. <laughs> No, 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 you're right. But we were we were the better Vikings, the, yeah, the Danes. Yeah. At least that's what I say to Swedish people and yeah. Norwegian people. <laughs> Is there any beef in between like all those countries like Massive. Sweden and yeah? Massive. Norwegian, Danish? Why? Oh yeah. yeah. What is it about? Mostly Denmark and Sweden. Yeah. It goes back to the to the Viking times when the yeah. Denmark used to own Sweden and Norway. Then they took it back. Mm. Um the language is so similar. Yeah. You know, Scandinavia. Which country is the better one of Scandinavia? Which is the most fun one? Who's better at football? Yeah. Who's got the prettiest girls? Like all that, all that stuff. There's <laughs> a lot of competition between uh, yeah. Denmark and, and Sweden. Yeah. Mm. So I do have a very good Swedish friend. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it's phased out a little bit the whole mm -hmm. rivalry thing. But, it was, what but it's like a funny thing. Oh yeah. Real, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody knows about Denmark and Sweden. Yeah. Because I remember I was watching. What was it like? Uh, Bridge Brooklyn Nine Nine, I think. And there, and there, there was like there, there were two kind of agents from Europe or whatever. Like they were from Sweden, and someone mentioned Danish there, and it's not my words. I'm just quoting the show. We understand you perfectly. Everyone in Sweden speaks English. We also speak Norwegian, Dutch, German, French, Russian, and Finnish. But not Danish. That is a garbage language for garbage people. Yeah. And I was yeah, very cool, confused. Mister. Like, is it like where? And it's American show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that American. I met some American people who thought Denmark was like a, a made-up country. They're like, <laughs> I thought that was like a fairy tale kind of country. Pretty sure it's real. <laughs> My it's passport made up like North Pole and, and dolphins, right? <laughs> you know, you know, it's such a good question. Why is it I like being Danish? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm just very proud of, mm -hmm. of Denmark. I think we're good, good people, good country. Yeah. yeah. We have our flaws, you know, um, politically, not always on the right side of... Who is? Yeah, 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 you're right, <laughs> you're right. Um, but no, I think, yeah, at least the values I've been brought up with. What's, the, what's next for you? Like, is there, is there anything in the pipeline? Is there anything, you know, cooking? There is. Yeah. It's a few different projects. Um, I'm writing, about to write a film, a feature with Lorenzo. He said it's his favorite script so far mm. and his favorite character he's ever come up with so far, but he wants to help me develop it further. Mm. Then there's a, a few projects that are being developed with um, the boys, um, Jack, Elijah, Tommy, um, you should all go look them up. They're very, very, very handsome, funky cats, <laughs> cool cats, as mm. we say. Um, have some projects there that are being developed. And uh, yeah. Oh, and I'm shooting a pilot for a TV series, which I'm, which is the last day of filming in July. Nice. You're you're a busy bee. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Only well, comparison to some of us. Yes, I wish I was more more busy. Well, you know. Yes, we all wish to have more, but you have you do have something which is nice. You know what's mm -hmm. ticking in the pipeline? Mm. What about like? Do you have a lot of additions now? Well, I've just signed a new agent. Yeah. I didn't have before. I mm. didn't have a lot of additions before at all. Yeah. I had like a really big one, which I think I was. You know, I was right for that part. Yeah. Like everyone thinks. And yeah. I was very disappointed I didn't get it. Um, but other than that, I didn't have anything really, mm. apart from the stuff that I myself got yeah. from the people I knew. And But now I've just signed with a new agent, which I'm really excited about and uh, really curious to see where it goes. And mm. it, it feels like a new chapter Yeah. Um, in my career and, and stuff. Mm. I'm really excited about that. Just, How do you deal with rejection? Let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Is it easy? Because it's it's easy to say let it go, but then no, it's not easy at all. Yeah. <laughs> when I didn't get that part, yeah. uh, I was like, it's like fuck that yeah. man. What? Not even a callback or anything. 
that self tape was really good. Mm. You see, too confident probably. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think it's part of the game. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, it sucks obviously when you don't get something. But again, I have the belief that mm. something better will come along, or mm. you're more right for something else. Mm. And I feel good about the stuff that I have gotten and the projects that I have been chosen for. Yeah, and and I choose to focus on that. It's part of the game rejection. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Just kind of take it on the chin and move move on. Yeah. When you started it, acting. I mean, when you went to I don't know, like first class, first. When you when you first decided, like that's what I'm going to do. Did you think it's going to be like like it is right now? Do do you think it will be easier, harder, same? I think I was so delusional and just so I didn't think too much. Yeah. Back then, because I knew I was just starting out. Mm. Obviously, we all have these. I have these dreams and visions of working with the people that inspire me, and you know, having a role that really mm-hmm. like hits the spot and touches people. Yeah. And, Or made people laugh. It, yeah. it doesn't have to be all drama, or it can be anything. But if it if it hits people some some way somehow, yeah. um, then that's enough for me. I think that now, I had that dream back then, but I kind of just was very present in the moment mm. and took every project and every yeah. person I met. And so you didn't have like any kind of goals or expectations. For example, like in two years I'm doing this. No, I tried that once. Yeah. One one year I was like, yeah. I wrote that New Year's. So I was like, this time next year I would have done a feature and mm-hmm. be signed to an agent. Mm-hmm. And I think it happened a year and a half later, yeah, or two years later or whatever. It happened at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's good to have small goals for yourself. Yeah, like I'll learn this accent within the next three months, mm-hmm. or I'll learn the skill, or I'll email these people, or but. It's so tricky with acting because it's so abstract. You can't really, you know, when you learn to juggle in football or I learn the serve or whatever. No, I mean with acting, I think the goals like the, your goals can't be like I'll get the role because it doesn't even depend on you very often. Like you can you can set up a goal like I'll learn this, I'll put effort into this. Yes, of course, like that. Like if if it depends on you, but like I'll get a soap or I'll get like a role in the future film, like. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think my goal has always been to just create really fucking good work mm. and things that I'm proud to show to the world, proud of what I'm doing, mm. um, be a good person along the way, affect people um, positively, and uh, and have a lot of fun while doing it. That's are, always. Are you proud of what you're doing? Yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, in life or acting? In acting. Or? I mean, like acting. If we talk about acting, like you can, how do do you cringe like a lot of actors when you when you watch yourself or you or you're fine with watching yourself? Sometimes I'm like, yeah. It's not that I cringe at myself, but sometimes I can be hard on myself, and I feel like oh, you could have done that better, mm-hmm. or I'll watch it back, or when you've done when you filmed. I've been on set, and then a month later, I'll be in the shower, and I'll be like, "Why didn't you say the line like that? <laughs> like, why didn't you? Uh, that would have been a way better delivery, or maybe you should have thought about the scene this way." Like you can always go back, and I have moments where I'm like, "Ah, oh, I could have done that better," mm-hmm. but I'm mostly very proud yeah. of the the work I put out there. Nice. Yeah, I nice. think uh, I, I try and give it my all when I'm on set. Very, very dedicated. It's the one thing I take the most serious in in life mm-hmm. is just you know acting and and getting where I want to go. Do you ever put uh, too much pressure on yourself when you're doing acting? I used to. I think. Yeah. I think I used to. Um, it's so it's such a interesting thing to talk about because you gotta be in like a flow state. Like you can't put too much pressure on yourself. I spoke about this with the. Uh, Lee, actually, you know when you play, we used to play tennis, and in the warm up, mm-hmm. we we smashing the balls. I'm yeah. hitting all the right shots, and 
it's such a good flow. Yeah. Once the game starts and we start counting points, all of a sudden I might miss a shot <laughs> or I won't really go at it as, at, as yeah. hard as I, as I could because now, now it counts or mm -hmm. now, we, now we count in points. So you have to some, somehow found that you have to find the middle stage of having fun, being okay with making mistakes, mm -hmm. being brave yeah. while getting the job done, Yeah, you know? And I feel like that's why I'm proud of the job, the jobs I've been on, Healing Andy, the films, because, oh my God, I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, even th I didn't even think about, oh, I need to do it like this, I need to do it like that, because mm -hmm. it was just in such a state of flow Mm -hmm. And it just melted into this whole concoction of fun and and synergy between the director, the other actors, the script. Um, that it was just I didn't even think about it, mm -hmm. um, which I think is the best state to be in. Yeah. But then I might have a big scene where I have to cry. It says on the script, the character now cries. <laughs> his eyes out and then you're like, oh my God. And then you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah. I did that once doing mm -hmm. filming. I was like, this is a big scene. I know it's a big scene. I have to cry. Yeah. Lorenzo was like, yep, yeah, gotta cry, dude. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I know. Right. Um, and I got there, yeah. got there and then cried my eyes out. Mm. Like a little, nice. little boy crying his eyes out. Um, but, it, but yeah, I did put a lot of pressure on myself in that moment. Mm. Which is also healthy to have some pressure on yourself, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. the, it's the it's everything needs to be in yeah a flow state. Yeah, I think so. But what, what's what's your recipe? How to get into this like middle middle point that like you have enough responsibility like on you, but at the same time enough of like playfulness and you know this like just just stay, state of mind when you can you know just experiment and be. Is there a recipe how to get there? I need to be comfortable with the people I work with. You might not like everyone you work with, mm -hmm. but I need to know the lines, first of all. I need to know what I'm doing in the scene. Like, what's the goal here? Mm. What am I trying to achieve? What's driving this scene? And then there's a million different ways that you can do the scene. And I might do it many different ways, mm. but I need to believe that I can do it, believe in myself, I need to be comfortable with the director, the actor I'm doing it with. And we need to remember that we're here to have fun and, and yeah. create something, some good work together. Yeah. So basically not giving a fuck, but giving a fuck, <laughs> you know? Yeah, not confusing at all. It is, Welcome very, to the profession. It is very confusing. <laughs> like what is it? I, this is such an interesting thing as well. I think about, I ponder and I wonder. So as a character, there's lines and you can read the lines and you know what this person is about a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, it gives you an idea. What are the circumstances? What's this person about? What's the environment? But together with that and whatever you as a person, whatever me, Freddie, Frederick, bring with me, combines with what the writer has written this character as, mm -hmm. then creates a third thing, which is a completely different thing, but something untangible mm -hmm. you can't i can't put a finger on it i don't know what it is but that's what i love when that happens when it all get mixed up together mm -hmm. and there's a character but you also bring in truth to the character from your own heart and your own kin you're bringing something with that that then merges into a third thing that then is a character to the people watching mm -hmm. or an illusion of a character do or a character i don't know do you think you you're managing to get to this point every time Every scene, no. no, but every project I have, yeah, yeah. You've been there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and when I'm there, that's when I know that I can be proud of what I did yeah. and uh, happy. And then even if I fuck up or if something goes wrong, at least I tried. Yeah. Or at least I was truthful, mm. I didn't fake it. Um, but I also think the, I tried for years to find a specific way of doing it every time but i think it's different every time well that's my next question how do you prepare for the role for the scene i need i need to know who the person is on the pages so i then can bring 
myself into it. Mm-hmm. Let's say you and I have a scene, right? And the objective for the character on is written clearest day is to get information from your character. That's that's the objective. That's what yeah. they want. Um, I can then go and say, okay, how would I get information from you in real life? Mm-hmm. I have many different ways. Of, I can never become someone else. I will never be a different person or a different character, but I can bring something with this thing that's written that would create a third different thing. Mm-hmm. But there's still truth in there. And there's a lot of personal touches on it. So am I going to make you laugh to try and get information out from you? Am I going to smile or am I going to be very direct and strong? And, mm. Or am I going to take the piss? Am I going to charm you? There's so many different ways that we do this in life all the time. So me using my personal experience and what I have for free as a person together with the environment that's been written and obviously you need to pay attention to is this guy a cop or a gangster or a, mm-hmm. whatever is the, the circumstances you're in. But mixed with that, that's what I try and do. I mm-hmm. see how I can blend the two and then I feel so loose and that's when you can improv, that's when it's fun to improv. Mm-hmm. Or then every line will feel super fresh and new to you. Yeah, that's when I feel like I'm achieving, that's what, that's what my prep is basically. Mm-hmm finding out what makes this character, this character. And it is a combination of what's written on the page and what I bring to it. Yeah. Because we all unique. You can bring some stuff that I can't and I can bring some stuff that you can't. And it's actually about accepting what you have and appreciating your uniqueness and and using that as a strength. Hmm. Um, the grass always seems greener, but it's not. And if you compare yourself to other actors or what they can do, or he looks like that, or he has this going for him, that's the thief of joy, really. Mm-hmm. That's the thief of your creativity. You need to, to first of all, accept yourself as a person and accept yourself for who you are. Flaws, mistakes, everything. I have a lot of them. I have a hell of a lot of them. But I can also use that as a strength. Or, oh, I fucked up this time, or I... I really hurt this person here or... Well, you said in the beginning, when we started the conversation, you said that you learned a lot about yourself. What do you mean? What did you learn? Who who do you think is Freddy Lysgaard? Loads of different things. Loads of different things. Yeah. Good friend, good brother, um, a dickhead sometimes. Um, takes the piss too much sometimes. Um, I'm many things, but what I always try and do is keep my heart in the right place and never come from a place of evil, never bring people down mm-hmm. on purpose, at least. <laughs> yeah. Like never, never try and spread negativity. I don't get it. Um, Where am I as a person? I don't, I got no idea. I'm still mm. figuring it out, yeah. which I hope I never will. I don't, I think we're never going to figure ourselves out completely. What I want to do though, and what, when I say I get to know myself is I want to be grounded in who I am with everything. Mm-hmm. I want to accept who I am, meaning the flaws, the good things, the bad things. And I want to be, be, be okay with who I am and not compare myself to other people. Are you completely thing. okay with who you are right now? I'm pretty okay with yeah. who I am. Um, I have things I can work on mm-hmm. uh, for sure and learn learn from, um, but that's just part of being human, I think. One yeah. thing I'm good at, as we spoke about before, is not being too hard on myself with mm-hmm. the mistakes I do make in life, but also because I know I, I don't try and intentionally hurt other people or fuck people over or Do I then still piss some people off sometimes? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> But that's also kind of fun sometimes. Yeah. Um, especially the last two years, I've become more grounded and more okay with who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, learned to accept that and not compare so much to yeah. other people. Social media is horrible for that. Um, that's one thing. But it needs to come from within. You need to kind of like, that's a journey we all go on. I used to be, <laughs> so funny. I used to be, um, still am, 100%, um, but I was told that I could be quite vain, 
care too much about oh it's the shot there okay how do I look on the shot on the camera or af- afraid to be ugly mm-hmm. on camera and now it's one of my favorite things to do yeah well you know what is very human to be define, ugly define ugly because I think when you're authentic it's already not ugly in a way that like it's especially for an actor if you're authentic it could be ugly in a beautiful way you know what exactly I mean? yeah exactly but I want to yeah just to let let it all hang out yeah let it hang loose like yeah. whatever it yeah just don't be scared to uh to to do whatever put yourself in a position where I'm talking about acting now you're not the most likable character or you're not mm-hmm. always the one saving the day or you're not always the star or the hero mm-hmm. like it's actually very fun to be a bit more rocket or a bit more just care less about how people view you and what they think about you yeah basically the way you look the way you behave because there's always going to be people judging you so it's yeah. very freeing to um to not care so much about what people think do i still care immensely absolutely <laughs> it's a journey i'm on here yeah i'm still vain yeah but i care less and less yeah and i try to be conscious about it about not caring too much about what people think i think it's so hard it's very hard to be consciously trying not to be conscious about it so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, did your reason reasons for doing acting change since you started now after like the years that you've spent you know not spent but years that you were doing it is it different your motivation no no same yeah i want to be part of creating something mm-hmm. and through a performance or mm-hmm. a moment that will hit the people in the chest yeah watching whatever goes on on that screen basically take it from screen to people's minds and hearts or bellies if they're laughing mm. um, yeah but you 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 could have done it not with acting you could have done it with writing you could have done it with uh, being a great cinematographer uh I think I'm, yeah i think i'm better at acting mm. it's my passion i'm really okay with just being an actor mm. being like like a weapon almost like use me as a weapon like yeah. Great script, love it. Director, direct me. You know, I love I love getting directions. Interesting, because you you call yourself a weapon. Because when I like, I kind of I think in the same way, but I call myself a tool. Mm. You call yourself a weapon. A weapon is more. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just curious. It's like it's more active in a way. It's aggressive, more, more aggressive, but not, and not like in the way that like you want <laughs> you want to kill people, but yeah, like it, more aggressive in like an act in like an action way. Yeah, mm. I do look at like making a film or play or whatever is like going to war mm. really is, and if they can use me anyway, like I love getting directions. Mm-hmm. I love sparring with the people around me. And building something together, and I look at myself as a piece of that puzzle. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I think I'll stick with weapon. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you would I would want me to ask you? You didn't ask me if if Denmark are gonna win the Euros or not. Well, I did this on purpose. I didn't want you to, you know, embarrass yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think it will? Because the thing is, no, like, for, for those of you who are watching the watching it like later, maybe months later, we're recording it during like the what second or first second week of Euros 2024. Uh, so there's there might be a lot of delusions, and I don't mean you. I mean just in general, because a lot of people, like a lot of countries, are playing. So do what do you think are chances for Denmark? Pretty slim. Yeah, I'd say my heart want them to win, but yeah. My brain says no. Is your friend still still playing for for the national team? I used to play football with a guy who was on the national team. His name? Joachim Mele, right back, really good player, scored a lot of goals. You played with him, yeah? Yeah, we used to play. Nice. <laughs> back, <laughs> were back were you ever in the running for for the national team? I like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play a lot of football. I used to love it so much, yeah. um, but I just wasn't good enough to to really. Yeah. Elevate and get there. I, 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 even for like juniors? The national team? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I was pretty good, but yeah. there's yeah, levels to know. this. You never know. Maybe there is another career that you, you could. You Maybe know. if I didn't like beer so much. <laughs> At what age? 
<laughs> we started young in Denmark. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was. What are the laws in Denmark like? In this... You can buy beer when you're like 16. Yeah. Yeah. 16. Yeah. You can buy beer and wine in the shops when you're 16. Yeah. It's a bit mental. I mean, it's it's better than 21. 21. That's is why it's the happiest country in the world. I don't yeah. know. I've never been. Never been? I've never been, no. I, I would love to go. I lo- well, I, I haven't traveled a lot, to be fair. I would love to travel more, but right now it's just like, it's, it's always... Sometimes I catch myself on... I don't remember who said it. Someone said it, that like most people live their lives like if they will live forever. Mm-hmm. Which means to basically postpone everything. Like I'll, I'll, I'll get this at some point. I'll get to this at some point. And I feel like maybe that's a mistake that I'm doing a lot. I would love to travel more, but you know, it's never, no, never the right time, or finance situation, or whatever. <laughs> or like you feel like, well, well, I'll bring this home. Like I'll, I'll get this. I'll kind of like, I'll get it. Like. I'll become a, 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 like, I am a professional actor, but I'll be a professional actor who can survive by just acting. And that, that's the moment when I will be able to do this shit. And then you never do. That's what I think as well. Yeah. I think, yeah, big paycheck is coming soon. Any kind of medium paycheck. It's not like, it's just like being able just to work as an actor and support yourself by just being an actor. That's probably one thing you asked yeah. if I still look, uh, still have the same goals and yeah. stuff. Now I'm a bit, one thing that's been brought into the conversation is, yeah, I'd like to get some money from it. No, I mean, I would love to get some money from it. Don't get me wrong. But not a lot, just a few mil, at least. Yeah, just a few mil. You know, a couple of hundred thousands would be fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'll holiday a few times. But right now, what I would want to have is more than one project a year. You or if it's one project a year, it's like it should be a big project, just so I can just do what I love. But you know, you will we'll manifest it. Let's manifest it together. Next, next full moon. <laughs> you know, there's like women's circles. Like yeah. We'll do a man's circle. Yeah. <laughs> and just sit there and hold each other. <laughs> well, you know what we need to do is more often support each other because I think that's what we not do enough Absolutely. as men. Absolutely. We're just like, it's all, all, almost always just like, ah, it's nothing, it's fine. I'll deal with it myself. And then you're just like, well, yeah. what happened to him? I don't know. Yeah, he, no. I'm I'm very blessed in that in that um, sense that I do. Uh, me and my friends, we really talk about mm-hmm. feelings, ups, downs. Yeah. Um, are we feeling low? Are we feeling good? And we're not scared to. Mm-hmm. You know, like the typical masculine man. Like we don't yeah. really do that. Yeah. At all. Yeah, but you still make fun of each other sometimes. Right. I would take the piss, like, yeah. Yeah, it's like which which is which is what it's supposed to be. It's not just like, oh my god, I'll support you. So like I support you, but also you know what? And here you go. Oh yeah, with love, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, we'll do that, we'll take the piss. Yeah. But then twenty minutes later, yeah, you'll be like, You got this, bro, come on. Yeah, yeah. And then we plot our futures together. Yeah, that's fucking beautiful. That's beautiful. Look, let's do the blitz round. Ooh. Let's round. Short questions. Short or not so short answers. No points, no right or wrong answers. Apart from a couple. But <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Uh, texting or talking? Talking. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Your one guilty pleasure? Reading. It's... That's oh, fuck off. I can't give my, the real oh, one. My guilty pleasure is reading. Oh my god. That's my guilty pleasure. I, mean, I would like to read my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's not a guilty pleasure. Come on. <laughs> it's like it's just I'm just trying to brag without bragging. <laughs> guilty pleasure <laughs> taking this news, the nicotine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't Disney. I love Disney. But that's not real. I'm not guilty about that. Yeah. That's just pleasure. You know, as, as a couple of my guests said, like, I'm not in the age to have any, any guilt about my pleasures. Yeah, I don't know. guilty pleasure. Going yeah. off the rails. Don't trust anyone who doesn't go off the rails a few times. All right. Uh, what makes you laugh? My friends. What makes you angry? The world. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, Injustice. Yeah. 
Do you have any nicknames? Pretty boy. <laughs> Pepin. 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 What does it mean? It's uh, between me and Lorenzo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what dish do you cook best? Scramble eggs. Uh, your favorite character in any fictional story, like book, games, films, series? Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Star Wars or the Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Alien or Aliens? Alien or Aliens? Alien by Ridley Scott and Aliens by 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 Cameron. Still don't know. Oh come <laughs> on, man! You get, that's that's your your uh, homework. One of my favorite characters. Sorry, Ari Gold, Entourage. Ari oh, Gold. Ah, love him. Sorry. <laughs> Lloyd. 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 <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Uh, any unexpected talents that you have? No, I wouldn't say so. All right. Uh, how so often sad. do you cry? Pretty often. Yeah. Well, it's pretty often. A few times a month. All right. Once that's... a month, let's say. All right. All right. And finally, how can people reach you if they want to work with you? Email, Instagram, agent. Okay. You'll you'll have everything in the description. And one last thing. So one cool thing. Something that you enjoy and you think our viewers should try it too. There's this Instagram page called That Food Loving Dude. Now, I never used to be a foodie or care too much. I love food, I love eating. Mm. But that food loving dude is one funky cat. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he uh, travels around the world, around London, reviewing food. And uh, that brings me a lot of joy. Nice. What he's doing. Yeah. Can't really figure him out. He's a very interesting character. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think the audience will uh, get a lot of takeaway from, uh, from watching that. What's so special about him? He's just, uh, he's a very mysterious cat. He's a very mysterious guy. Um, I'm very intrigued by what he does <laughs> and the way he does it. All right. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, all right, I like it. Okay, this is it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really fun. And I hope we'll do it again. Absolutely. And if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, uh, comment if you want to share something with us. And I see you next time. Bye.